From 1962 to 1963, the BBC aired a satirical show about the news, That Was the Week That Was, that later crossed the pond to NBC in 1964. David Frost and others would pick apart the week's current events, highlighting the ridiculous. The week that just ended would have been perfect for their show. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. When I start choosing the news stories that appear on this website, I typically have something like 9,000 possibilities. I narrow it all down to one for each day of the week. The few I'd like to share with you right now show a total disregard for logic and clear thinking. Let's start with this headline from faithwire.com. Rioters destroy Philadelphia's statue of abolitionist Matthias Baldwin. We all know that emotions have been getting out of control since police officer Derek Chauvin squeezed the life out of George Floyd, a black man accused of forgery. Chauvin will stand trial for murder, as a fired cop deserves. Anyway, demonstrations have broken out all over the country, calling for the destruction of Civil War-era statues. One of the statues that was recently destroyed was of Matthias Baldwin, The Philadelphia entrepreneur paid for the education of black children and hired blacks for his locomotive plant when doing so was not politically correct. The frenzy of the demonstrations was so out of control last week that the vandal did not bother to check whether Baldwin was enemy or benefactor. He or she was, in fact, disrespecting a civil rights hero. Our next story comes from RevolutionRadio.org. Here's the headline. UCLA professor who refused to postpone exams for black students is suspended. It seems certain students wanted time off to demonstrate against the death of George Floyd. Professor Gordon Klein responded, Remember that Martin Luther King said that people should not be evaluated based on the color of their skin? Do you think that your request would run afoul of MLK's admonition. But the administration said in effect, don't confuse us with the facts. Story 3 is also from academia, by way of VigilantCitizen.com. Ready for the headline? University professor loses administrative job for stating that men cannot get pregnant. Kathleen Lowry teaches anthropology at the University of Alberta in Canada. She considers herself a liberal and a feminist. But here's the catch. She also considers biological gender to be of utmost importance when fighting for women's rights. I don't know if this is the case with Lowry, but some feminists oppose biological men on women's sports teams. That may have been what she was thinking. Anyway, because Lowry is outspoken about men not being able to have babies, She lost her administrative position as chair of the undergraduate program, which goes to prove an education at the University of Alberta is probably worthless, especially if you're studying biology. And here's the saddest story of all. From Summit.News, the headline screams, Virginia Senator told police to stand down before statue collapse that left man in a coma. Well, that's a mouthful. It seems State Senator Louise Lucas told police to stand down to enable protesters to wreck a Confederate soldier statue in Portsmouth. As one of the bronze figures came down, it split open the skull of protester Chris Green. I don't know why the officers obeyed Lucas, seeing a senator has no personal authority, but only authority in conjunction with other senators, an aggregated authority. That's when voting in the General Assembly. Okay now, you need to know this. I'm not against demonstrations in themselves, and my family is mixed race. I can understand the feelings. Now the Constitution gives us the right to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That's from the First Amendment. The kind of demonstrations we've been hearing about lately don't match this standard. And why protest about something that over 99% of the population already agrees with you about? Now for the other matter. 
Universities, like demonstrators, also need to be driven by facts, not frenzy and fear. Except for the Kennedy assassination, I don't think that was the week that was, from the 1960s, had anything to talk about compared to what we experienced last week. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.